Hi, this is Manos Brilakis presenting case 100 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case illustrating that sometimes better can be the enemy of good. The patient had a right coronary artery CTO. He had previously placed stents in the proximal, mid and distal right coronary artery that were occluded. And the entire vessel proximal to the stents was also very diffusely diseased. The right posterior lateral and posterior descending artery were filling by epicardial collaterals from the distal circumflex. There did not appear to be good septal collaterals supplying the PDA. And this is another view showing the same thing that there were not really good septal collaterals, but the uh, filling of the RCA was through epicardial collaterals and there was some retrograde of the filling inside the distal part of the stand. So we have an osteal right coronary CTO. The length was approximately 50 millimeters. Distal vessel was diffusely diseased. There was a stand in the distal part, and there was a bifurcation of the PDA and PLV close to the distal uh, cap. And the collaterals were epicardial and did not appear to be really good for the retrograde approach. Therefore, our plan was to start with undergrade wiring, followed by undergrade sexual entry if the wire was minimal, and then use retrograde as um, the last uh, option if undergrade crossing attempts were not successful. The wire quickly went into the subintimal space. This was a Caravel microcatheter with a filtered XT guide wire, and after it entered the subintimal space, it was impossible to advance other wires to go through the previously placed stands. But we did know from the past that one way to recanalize those lesions is to actually go in the subintimal space and then crush the stand using additional stents. So we advanced a knuckled pilot to Hanna guide wire all the way to the distal cap. And we were able to advance uh, the Keravel microcatheter all the way distally. And then we changed for a Miracle 12 wire as a rail to deliver the stingray balloon. However, unfortunately, we were unable to deliver the stingray through the mid part of the stand. As a result, we used ballooning with the threader balloon microcatheter all the way from the proximal to the distal part of the stand. This is a maneuver we want to avoid if possible because it can create hematoma distally. But in this particular case, there was no way around this since we cannot deliver the stingray balloon. So after inflating the threader, we were then able to advance the stingray balloon all the way to the distal vessel. And now we have the two dots of the stingray balloon that are essentially located adjacent to the reconstituted distal vessel. We then perform re-entry attempts using the double blind stick and swap technique, sticking with a, with a, a stingray wire and then switching to a pilot 200, which seems to cross into the distal true lumen into this branch of the posterior lateral vessel. There was some question whether that was the true branch or not, and we actually pulled back the microcatheter and then we were able to rewire into a small superior branch, confirming that we were indeed into the distal true lumen. We switched uh, the wire for a workhorse wire, but then we had significant difficulty delivering any stands distally because of tortuosity and the presence of the previous stand. Therefore, we advanced a second guide wire and over it, we inflated a balloon to do the distal anchoring technique. That balloon essentially fixed the initial true lumen balloon wire. And then over this, we were able to deliver the stands. So the stand now is uh, at the distal uh, cap into the distal vessel. We were careful not uh, to affect the distal bifurcation. Then the stand was deployed. Additional stands were placed all the way to the ostium of the right coronary artery. And this was the result, which was fairly satisfactory. We did have TIMI3 flow in both the PDA as well as the posterior lateral vessel. But that distal area of the stand, there was a large step down and there appear to be some haziness that could be representative of dissection. So there was a lot of debate on whether we should do something or not. We did an additional view and once again, there was good flow, but we weren't sure that this was a good result. We we're concerned there might be a dissection. And to cut the long story short, we decided finally to stand. We placed an additional short stand into the distal RCA and then we realized that that was not the right decision because we lost the posterior lateral vessel. 
So this is why sometimes better is the enemy of the good, but trying to get a perfect result and potentially tuck up a dissection, we ended up losing a side branch. Fortunately, we were able to advance a pilot 200 into the posterior lateral vessel, perform balloon dilation with a small balloon. And in the end, we did have a good result, restoring flow both in the PTA and the posterior lateral branch. The case lasted about two hours, 28 minutes of fluoroscopy time, two gray and 240 ml of contrast. So in summary, the, the better can sometimes be the enemy of the good, as Voltaire said, and that's very true when it comes to CTO intervention. It is well known that we don't go for perfection because the distal vessel will, in most cases, grow significantly after we restore undergrade flow. So unless there is a poor flow or there's a clear big geographic disturbance, it's best to stand uh, as little as possible and give the distal vessel time to expand rather than putting additional stents. And that's what we found out the hard way in this particular case. When there is a bifurcation on the distal cap, it is important to restore flow in both the branches if possible, because that provides, first of all, better relief of ischemia for the patient, but also increases the outflow and potentially reduces the risk for stenosis. And last, in cases of instant stenosis CTOs, if there is no other strategy available, and in this particular case, we could not, go, we could not do undergrade wiring and retrograde was not appealing, Crossing the restenotic lesion substand and then standing essentially around the previous stand and crushing the previous stand is an acceptable strategy. And there are some studies now showing that the outcomes are relatively favorable. Thank you.